Hi, welcome to episode 7 of Blether and Paint. Um, I'm standing next to one I did earlier, very Blue Peter fashion. I tend to paint in twos or threes quite a lot of the time. Uh, this one I started yesterday with a completely, sort of slightly different palette for me. Um, not that you can necessarily tell that with the painting, but it was quite different colours. I got sent a free set of paints and I thought I'll use these, try them. So. Um, I'm not entirely happy with how this went, I, I, that's unfair, I'm not sure yet, uh, I may come back to it and do some more but it's too wet right now to do that so I'm going to move on to the second one, um, I'll take this away and put the blank canvas up here, um, wave paintings are always a little bit difficult uh, to maybe do in a YouTube video because um, they tend to be quite organic. It tends to be chucking the paint on, use every tool in the box, use every technique I know and see what happens. There's not a plan, there's not there's not a reference photo, there's not an easy step-to-step -step way of like do this, do this, do that and then the painting's done. It's much more kind of free flow. So I don't know how this is going to go but I thought let's just try it. It's not too big a canvas so I should be able to do it in not too long a time. Um, but we'll see. So, right, these are the wee paints I was given. If I can find my table here is a mess, you can't quite see it, but it's a tip because I've been painting all day today. So underneath all these dirty brushes, this uh, these are Michael Harding paints. Now I normally use Talon's Rembrandt, um, but I got given these in my last order. For some reason I got a reef sample set, so I'm just going to use them up and I'm going to use this, I think it's an ultramarine blue. And there is also somewhere under here, oh yep, a yellow yellow lake it's called. Uh, so I'm going to chuck some of that on as well and we'll maybe probably start with the yellow, that's what I did last time. It's quite good to get a base of yellow in to give a, a kind of warmth to these waves. And the reason I kind of decided to use these was I got this warm white which it said it was like a lead white alternative. Now somebody years ago was posted in one of my posts on, on Facebook, oh you should try lead white, I think that would really work for your wave painting. So I saw this lead white and I thought, ah, okay, I'll give it a go. So that's what we're doing. Um, I'll find some clean brushes to start off with. And I'm just going to ch chuck a load of yellow on to go on with. And it's already, you know, mixed up with bits of green, but that's fine. And I have no idea what shape this wave's going to be, where it's going to go, so I'm just chucking it on a little bit. And I'm straight away probably strike, trying to get some blue in and mix up some really rich dark greens. Now one thing I didn't do last time which maybe was why I struggled a wee bit was I always kind of like to use red as well because it darkens up the blue quite nicely if you um, obviously you're going to mix blue and yellow gives you green like every child knows but if you want a really dark green you, you probably want to chuck a wee bit red in there too so I'm going to squeeze some of that out and yeah, I'm just going to kind of go for it with some darks now. And go around the edges with that a little bit. So it's still a green. It's a really dark green though, which is what we want. The wave paintings, what tends to happen is I chuck a lot of white on there. I tend to um, use old toothbrushes and the big bristle brushes to sort of spray on the white. So I need to have rich dark colours to start off with or it all gets muddied up really quickly. And already that's getting a bit lighter so I'm going to just get more, uh, don't need more yellow right now, I need more blue and more the red. Um, <coughs> So it's probably been about six weeks since I last did an episode. I'm trying to sort of publish them to go along with my newsletter every month. 
but last time I was super organised and did it well before my newsletters. It's a long time since I've talked through one and I haven't watched it back so I have no idea what I talked about last time. So if I repeat myself I do apologise. Right now I'm in um, really sort of busy periods where it's been really frustrating. I haven't had enough time in the studio and I've been getting a little bit cross and edgy because I haven't had the studio time I need. Um, a lot of that's because I've got this Works and Papers show. So I've been doing a lot of sketching outside the studio. So that's been a lot of the work I'm doing. But even that, I'm, I'm struggling to find any time for. So, I, and I, I don't even quite know why. It just feels like every time I have just a little meeting or something, it then, then there'll be some reason that something else happens that day. So one hour meeting actually ends up taking the whole day somehow because in a normal work day I only have five hours really uh, in between picking up children so it's, it's not a long time so if halfway through that you've got a one hour meeting or a two hour meeting your day has gone and um, yeah not sure what I'm doing here but The idea is just to create some darks at the start, create some darks and lights, and then we start working them in together, and then we just try and pull some wavy magic out of that. It's been very windy at the moment. There's been some lovely stormy weather, and that always makes me want to paint waves. And see, I quite often paint, like enjoy painting two or three paintings at the same time, but I don't, I don't paint in big long series. I, I like to be very free to jump about, um, and you know, it might be six months to a year to the last, to the last time that I did a wave painting, but I, I, I kind of always know that I'll come back to them the next time I just get the notion for it, so that's kind of fine really. So today I've had the interesting situation of my husband's actually been out at a meeting in Edinburgh, so I've had the house to myself. It's been quite exciting. It doesn't often happen these days. And the children are having a granny day. That often happens when I do a blether and paint. So you must think they're always at grannies, but they're not. They just um, once a week at most. But it's usually. I, 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 I've never quite tried doing a, an episode first thing in the morning, you know, because I sort of feel like it takes me all day to kind of warm up my painting. It doesn't really, but it, you know, I just, um, I'm maybe not that chatty first thing, like like many people, like my coffee, not, not got a lot to talk about. So it takes till the end of the day until I'm feeling in the mood to Right, now we're going to mix this up a little bit already and chuck some of this bright blue in. I was doing some painting earlier on today, a uh, really big blue canvas. I've been doing a lot of big blue, sort of empty beaches at the moment. This paintbrush is so filthy. I might just try and uh, wipe it off. I had to clean all the blue paint off my face before I started. I probably haven't cleaned it all off. But, uh, so we're going to get some of this blue up here because it's quite nice against that dark, I think. And I have tons of it left over and I want to use it up, so... And already I'm kind of feeling, oh, that yellow, I hate it. But I know the yellow's going to go, but I know I need to keep enough of it behind just to keep me happy. I'll say it's going to be difficult to explain to you on a point to point basis of what I'm doing here because I don't really quite know myself. I just have to let it do what it does in these paintings. Very quickly, shooting a lot of this really bright colours through, and um, oh, my hands are too dirty, too dirty. I might just have to get some wipes and wipe some of it off. So 
also uh, other new paints I have. I've been trying to experiment a little bit more with my palette and um, I'm one of these people that usually paints with maybe two or three colours in their palette, five or six at most, but it's nice to mix up by buying, every time I do a paint order I try and buy a new colour that I haven't used before. Um, and I don't have to do that many paint orders, you'd be amazed how long these little tubes last. Sometimes you can use a whole tube in a painting, but sometimes, you know, some of the yellows will last over a year, so it just really depends. This is a Naples yellow that's coming out a lovely pink colour. It's a Naples, Naples yellow and red. Um, and yeah, I kind of used this last time, it was lovely, and I might use this big palette to put it on. This this is actually from B and Q. It is actually a um it's it's for plastering I think but it's quite fun because it's quite sturdy. A lot of artists pal uh, palette knives and things are tiny and they're a little bit flimsy and it's it's nice to use something big and kind of meaty and makes nice big marks so we're just going to chuck some of this on and just going to go for it a little bit and see what happens. Oh, that is a nice colour. It's very translucent. It doesn't last long. So, alright, I'm going to have to wipe all the yellow off. for all these... There's a big line of that paint inside, and because it's expensive, I don't want to lose it, so I don't know if I can just um, scrape it off and put it back on using a different palette knife. It's probably a bad idea, but... See what can I... This is where the stretch bar lies behind, so I'm going to have to somehow work that out without painting. But at this point, I just want to make some, make some kind of slightly interesting things. And it's all about play at this point. It's all about just seeing what comes out. It's really tempting to get white on too soon. And I really want to get some white on there, but I know the minute I start putting white on, all the other colours go a little bit muddy. So I might just keep going with some... some of this blue. And we're going to go back to a different palette now, maybe this one I used earlier. And just kind of move that about a bit. to live with the fact that there's some line down the middle here. Uh, right, what do I do, want to do now? I, it's just really a lot of um, standing back and seeing what comes out of these paintings. You just don't always know. I think I still want more darks in. So I'm just going to, I quite like there's something happening here that I kind of want to accentuate. Yeah, it's a kind of nice wavy sort of thing, wavy, squiggly kind of thing happening here that you sort of feel like it may be crashing down and go that way and that way and that would be quite nice and maybe pull dark back up again in this corner up here, give this a little bit of depth, but not too far and maybe a little bit really dark in here, I'll allow that to go off to the side a little bit.
it may be that, you know, this ends up being disastrous. I don't know if that would be, still be a good video to put up. Um, there's never a guarantee we're doing waves that, that it'll work. It's just a kind of really a bit of a suck and see. I don't know if I can resist much longer without putting white on. Maybe I'll try and just put a bit more uh, of the Naples yellow and some of the lead white rather than a pure white. Um, and I'll use a palette knife to do that. This palette knife's got a lot of blue in it to start with, but that doesn't necessarily have to be a problem. So I'm just trying to start to see what happens here. very wasteful of paint this kind of method. I don't like waste. A lot of my paintings just use very minimal amounts of paint but you know. have to let your hands slide about a little bit, be a little bit free. And keep standing back and looking and seeing what's coming out of it. And troughs of water and I'm not liking this dark blue I've got in here. Oh. I might just have to wipe all that off and yeah but I don't want it too flat a line of white either and this is all going a bit weird. I might just pull some some this kind of funky blue in here. That's kind of better because I'm getting that yellowy. I, th I think it's a good idea that I used a red in this one because I'm starting to get that kind of almost browny colour into the water a bit more. So I'll try and pull a bit more of that down here. Try and work the lines I've already made. And Feeling of whatever and water ebbing and flowing around. Um, I'm going to get a fresh brush now. Anyway, sorry, very boring chat here. So what's been going on? I've redecorated my studio. I should show you all since you last saw this. Um, I've done a studio photography shoot, uh, which I've been meaning to do for years. A superbly talented local... Local... I hate it when people call me a local artist. I shouldn't say she's a local photographer. She lives near me. She's very, very talented. She does... She's a chef, photographer, does a bit branding, does everything so well. And I, you know, she's a friend of a friend. As well, so I've, I've met her a few times at various various things, um, and I have said to her in the past, oh, "I'd love to get you to come and get some photos of me in the studio." And finally, I kind of plucked up the courage to ask her properly and said, "Please come and take some photos of me um, that I can use for my website and my press and all the rest of it." So that happened last week I think and oh I'm so delighted with the photos it's so so lovely to have photos that are, they're very natural but, you know I'm, I'm not one to wear makeup I'm not one to to um polish a sow's ear shall we say uh you know I'm a wee old lady 
almost 50 next year. So I, di I didn't want things that made me look too pretty. I wanted things that were kind of genuine, genuinely me. And but and this genuinely sort of showing off the space and showing off what I do. And, and that's what I got. And I'm so delighted. Well, this is all coming along really nicely, but um, this corner up here, a mm, bit of a sharp line there. Ah, don't know what to do next. Um, so anyway, the studio shots, they were amazing. And Amanda, who did the studio shots, Amanda Thar Farnese Heath is her name. Um, very talented lady, as I say. And she's also running a charity auction right now. I've put a little painting in because it's it's to raise money for any Afghani refugees that will hopefully filter through to Scotland at some point. Um, and it's a cause I really strongly believe in, as I'm sure many of us do. Um, God, can, I just, you know, you can't really not have your heart wrung by what's happening in Afghanistan right now and feel for the creators there that are it's particularly the women though not exclusively the women it's pretty hellish for the men as well um, yeah pretty awful t to be held in a place where they're shutting the shutting the schools down for women and yeah so anyway charity auction that opens in on the 25th of 25th of September I, I'd say I'll put it in the show notes but I don't even know what I'm talking about when I say that I just hear it in podcasts but I'll put in some links both to my newsletter if you follow that and that's how you got here and to to my YouTube channel and there will be some amazing lots to sell not just art Far from it. Um, lots and lots of different things. I'm looking for this Naples pink and I can't find it. Mm, excuse me. Oh, I've just... <laughs> I'm like a, a little bird. I've just noticed this all covered in blue. And oh, I like that blue. I might just do a little bit of that up here because that just looks quite exciting. Which is probably a bad idea, but hey, just like take some blue in. Um, I might have to stop and have a little look, and I'll get back to you because wave paintings are weird and tricky. I might do a little bit more before I do that, but I'm going to do that soon because you do need to stop and look a lot with wave paintings. Try and get a clean palette knife. And I'm going back to this Naples yellow, maybe use a little bit of the other yellow in it. And just to pull a little bit along here. Mm, it's got polluted a little bit with that green. But I want a little bit of this fresh yellowy colour back again. Yeah, that's all wrong. Never mind. That's what happens in these paintings. Things go right, things go wrong. They all start off so filled with promise and then you spend hours trying to get them back to the original place that you thought you were going. I don't want to overdo it with these kind of like marky marks. This is all quite nice, the marky marks here, but it's all going a bit, a bit tits up over there. Oh, we've got a wee, let's just try and brush out. So I think there's good things starting to happen. I'm going to have to uh, maybe just take a moment. Just try to carve in some 
spaces here. Right, definitely time to take a wee break. Hi again, I thought I would give you a little studio tour and show you my redecorated studio with the lovely white floors which are stunning and um, oh it's a bit of a mess isn't it never mind and you can see my wine it's well it's Thursday night it is six o'clock I'm having a glass of wine while I do these because I, I usually do to be quite frank anyway so that's how the studios look in these days I'm really really happy with it redecorated Oh, I've somehow put silent mode on. Hang on. Okay, so we're back again. I've had a break, had a little chance to look at this. Kind of sat there and thought, I knew what to do next, but now I'm back here, I have no clue, to be quite frank. Um, there are things I really like so far. I'm kind of loving this kind of yellowy sweep down here. Not loving the bright, bright blues. I love those blues, but I don't think they're quite working. They're not doing what I want them to do. This whole area here is all wrong. This I kind of like, but it needs more. Um, lots to do, and I don't know where to start. So we'll just start by finding a brush, finding a brush, finding a brush. Um, I think I want to start by putting some darks on, actually. It's always uh, coming and going with the darks and the lights and these. And I'm going to pick up some of that dark there and just bring it back up here a wee bit. Cover up these blues and let them sort of hopefully kind of shine through the dark but not overtake it. I'm going to need some more of that ultramarine which I've lost now. So anyway, we're at the stage where it <laughs> always gets to the stage of blending and paint where the, uh, the children are playing outside, not my children. So it might get a bit noisy. It usually does. It's this time of night. Um, I've got enough red in here because it's giving it the, the richness I need. I'm slightly worried now because I've had quite a good start to this um, but I've got a feeling because I'm talking I might just go and screw it up and that would be a bit of a shame. Oops, see, see what I'm doing? Screwing up, uh, totally screwing up without paying attention. Hey ho. I really quite like the richness that's going on here, so I don't want to lose it too much. And I think what I need to do at this point again is go back with a palette knife, a nice clean one, with some nice clean paint. That's all mucky paint. too yellowy but if I squeeze some white in it might work. I actually got some white white going on. Oh that's the first time I've got the white white out rather than the, the lead white which is very gentle white so but I just want to mix up. Uh, if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm sorry I should have put my palette knife where you can see it, it's really hard to get that right. Um, I'm trying to make up a kind of yellowy white but it's not too bright, but we'll just do for a little bit of um, what I want to kind of do is pull a little bit of detail in here. Waves are so organic, but they do have an order to them. And uh, they, they do have a logic. And you kind of need to listen to that logic. There's a little bit of black got mixed in there. I'm not quite sure how, but I'm going to just let it be just now and keep going back to this stuff here. Let's 
see if that makes uh, sense. Need a fresh rag. <coughs> I have built a whole rag basket and lots of rags filled in it so I don't have to stop mid-painting and chop up rags which is actually really quite nice. And there's too many colours going on here and I'm just going to try and slide over them and every time I do this I get some green paint on my palette knife so I have to come and wipe it off and it annoys me because I didn't, all the paint that's on the palette knife because you have to put it on quite thickly is wasted. Now here we just want to Kind of thing. Oh, that's too much. Take. That's why I use too many paintbrushes doing this. That's a bit better. So I'm almost adding the structure in here of the painting a little bit. I'm trying to really <laughs> twist my arm backwards and do weird things. Top bit not at all working, not at all working. How can I get that to to blend in a bit. Oh, too much to point. I'm being a lot more deliberate of my actions now because there's things I like and things I don't want to lose. But And right now it looks like there's too many of these white lines kicking around. So some of them will get taken out. What I will try and do is do this kind of, I like the idea of this area of sort of really quite white in here. So I'll try and get some. If you could see my face, my eyes are like this. I'm like half closed trying to just kind of analyse what's going on. Ugh, that's too much of that and too not quite oh dear. Right. Go back to the darks up here. So I'm hoping this blue I put on is, is going to sort of come good but it'll be underneath other colours so it'll just kind of give them a little bit of life. I mean that you do get this sort of unexpected blues and water but it's not always the main focus. Now, um, now I've got my dark brush all covered in slightly lighter paints. I need to get a rag. Anyway, sorry. I get carried away and I get very dull and I'm sorry about that. Um, try and think of things to talk about as I actually paint. I'm trying to remember what I was doing. Oh, that's kind of nice. If I can just kind of curl in here. And then brush that up through. Yeah, that kind of works as long as I can get the dark back in. Um, so yeah, today has been a bit of a treat because it's been a long time since just had a day where I thought, well, I do have other things to do. I'm going to ignore them all. I'm just going to go into the studio and paint what I want to paint. So I came in this morning with no idea what I was going to paint. Normally I have that situation of like I've been on sort of certain walks and 
like, oh, I can't wait to paint this thing that I saw on that walk the other day. But actually, I don't know. There's been nothing that's been pulling me the last few days so much. Um, so I did come in totally sort of free and easy this morning and just paint whatever you feel like painting, which is quite nice to do. Right, I think that's enough big brush. I might want to move on to a smaller brush now. Um, oh, it's quite nice because it's got a little bit of green in it already. Um, what I wanted to do is just kind of pull some of this up through, but I still think I need to get rid of some of this here. Eat. Eat. You can see there's like a really weird sharp line going on up here which is not very organic or anything but I kind of know that's where I'm going to go with some some spraying later on so I'm not too worried about that so far. What I want to do now I guess is get yet another brush or maybe use this one but take some paint off it. I'm just kind of move about in here a wee bit and give it a little bit of depth. It's gone from being really well and free to really tr trying to pay attention to what I'm doing and trying to make sense of it all a bit. brushes here. And this is, I'll say, all a bit careful and precise, but it will go back in again to the, to the more slightly more wilder stuff again hopefully but try not to fuck it up too much is that coming out okay that's too much black and white up there but I definitely need a little bit brownie stuff happening it's got, to, it's got to have red and oh wrong yellow This is where I'm being punished for putting white on too early on because that white's now doing my head in. And I always tell myself, wait for the white, and I can't do it, I can't do it. Um, but it should come good, hopefully. a bit too deliberate at the moment. Constant balance between precision and precision and um, chaos. And I guess that's painting, isn't it? Otherwise we didn't do it all on a computer screen.
<laughs> oh dear. I've got a feeling I've just screwed this up completely. Yeah, it's kind of lost all the, everything that it had that I liked before. Oh dear. We'll see if we can pull it back. And maybe just, um, kind of want to do something wild. Uh, but I don't know what. Use this one here. It's kind of blue. It's gonna to have to do something. hear lots of stuff going on outside which makes always makes me a little bit shy and quiet um, just enough darks in here that I can move forward to the next stage which is if I can find the right tools just putting a little bit of the frog that's down there. It's a frog. <laughs> so what I want to do is get some of the spray that I'm doing but have it not be quite so so white but it's being a bit stubborn and refusing to do what I want it to do. Well I don't know that's a bit better. Get it. I might have to just, oh god, hands getting worse and worse. Mix up some more yellow and green here, yellow and blue. Make it a little bit. Still too much white in it. I 
and I'll go back to my little toothpaste which I'm using for the real whitey stuff and back to this little bit here which is just going to have lots of stuff in it it's a bit of a cheaty way of working I guess but you kind of need to know where to do it so it's not that cheaty <laughs> Starting to get to something a bit nice and a bit interesting. I'm chucking all this on here and I know that I'm gonna pull it down a wee bit using a mop brush which I can't find. Should have one from earlier. I'm in one wee second. Yeah, so this is a, a mop brush, which is really for watercolours and things like that, but I quite like using them for oils too especially for waves when you just want to start pulling down these whites and I think we need a bit of pure white in I don't know if I want to use a palette knife at this point or the toothbrush again I think it would be a bit of toothbrush Maybe a bit of palette knife. brush again and use that then for flickies. Oh, that's not going to work. And this one's all blue now, so that's not going to work. I might just have to ooh, quickly wash this. every dirty rag in the place including my hands which is really not a good idea I normally have a towel sitting around for this and I don't know where it's gone everything's too tidy in my new studio and I can't find all the stuff I normally use right let's try again used every tooth every brush in the place by now.
me dark brush again to Ooh, and all my paints disappeared. Is my faint face all covered in yellow and green yet? I bet it is. Still, I think we're nearly there. And not quite working up there. Right, I want some really, really dark now. And that's gonna be. It's always the more and more yellow and the more and more white goes on the painting, the, and, and these spatters and all the rest of it. It's really hard to pull out the darks again. Um, but it's just got a bit flat here, and I don't feel very happy with it. Um, honestly, if you. <laughs> I need to make sure the camera you can actually see what's going on this table next time because it's really really disgusting and I think that's me used all of these little sample paints that I got corner here that's bothering me now I'm kind of okay with the rest of it but this corner here is going all wrong and it was lovely and I've screwed it up and that's quite annoying Maybe time for a palette knife again. You know, it sort of reminds me of, of watercolour a little bit, these paintings. Um, you, people always say watercolour is really, really hard to paint with because you can't make mistakes. And it's kind of a little bit like that with this. It's like once you start making mistakes, it's really difficult to kind of recover it. And This lovely white here, uh, here, and then there's some yucky stuff that I sprayed on here that's all wrong. 
So I need to try and work out how to get that kind of white back, which is not going to be that easy. So I'll try and just pull my palette nice as Too precise. Mm. Sorry, this is probably the most boring episode of Blair and Paint I've ever done because, ugh, and I kind of knew that it was a bad idea to do a wave one because I just get caught up in what I'm doing and pff, it's really hard. <laughs> they are the hardest paintings I do by far. You know, they sort of look effortless and sometimes they really, really are. Uh, but a lot of the time they're, they're actually the hardest paintings because they're just, you just don't know what's going to happen. They're very hard to control. I just don't want to lose all the kind of really nice yellows I have down there. And it's a bit this is kind of coming down the middle and it's like, wee, do, do, do. nah, don't, don't like that too much. Hey, I'm going to change that. Um, maybe. Too mucky now. I'm trying to counteract this middle thing by sort of changing direction a little bit up here. So we'll see if it works or not. If I could find my paints, that would really help. If I could find a clean spot palette to put them on, but it's not filled with white, that would also help. Mm. There we go, last little bit of the blue out this tube. Kids seem to have gone inside now, thank goodness. I just always feel really weird chatting away when the kids are outside there. Oh, here we go. Here's some fierce dark again. That might help if I can get some darks back in.
do a little bit more, possibly, if I can, a bit more white up here. And now we're starting to get this coming this way instead, which is good. And I'm just going to go back to the toothbrushy thing again and give it a little bit more. I'm kind of annoyed I put, put the dark stuff in this one because now it doesn't work as a light one and it was working really nicely earlier. But, uh, Just get that idea of using the mop brush. I think it's looking pretty wavy. I think I may be at the point to stop and um, yeah, certainly time to stop and have a look I think. problem is this little bit here maybe well, maybe needs it a little bit actually dark in it and I think the only way to put that on now is, is with a palette knife rather than a brush honestly I feel I don't normally actually feel dirty when I paint but today I really do I'm probably going to look back on this video and go oh my god you're filthy um, Yeah, a little bit too red. Oh dear. Uh, that's my own fault for not squeezing blue out because I know the blue's pretty much done and I keep losing it. <clears throat> I should be like a surgeon with somebody in hand and I just go blue and they squeeze it out for me and that'd be great, wouldn't it? But uh, I think even artist assistants might balk at that. Right, so this is kind of annoying. I can't find the blue I was using, so I'm going to have to switch blue, which I, I don't really like doing that in a painting. I like to use the colours I started with. Um, but I just want a little bit of... No, I need yellow in there as well. Yellow and blue, less red. Here we go. See, I was nearly there and I've just screwed it up again. Oh well. Oh well, oh well, well. What do we do with that? Oh, it didn't work. If in doubt, all the thing you can do is, is kind of rub it out. And try and go again. And now... 
<clears throat> could have annoyed. I thought it was done. toothbrush it's just very iterative way of painting you know you get them to a point where you think oh I'm happy and then you see a bit that you're not happy with and then you keep going back and then and then the more you go back the more you screw it up <laughs> it's amazing any of them ever get finished it may be time to stop but I'm not sure the only thing is there's a big line across here which I'm not entirely sure of what I was thinking of when I did it let's try and get rid of it a wee bit without taking away the nice I do quite like these big strong acid blues in the middle that's it this is how you paint a wave you make a big mess and you move it around and it goes really wrong and then you try and get back to a place where you're kind of vaguely happy with it and I'll do that thing of sitting down and then realize I'm not at all happy with it and I'll probably come back to it and screw it up completely so either this will be the one that ends up in your newsletter as painting the month or it will be destroyed in some way or another but um, I think I think there's enough in there that I'm kind of happy with it. What I want from a wave painting is I, I just want it to feel like movement, I want it to feel like water, I want it to feel that moment of the light just digging right deep into the water and pulling bits out, I want energy and I kind of want it to be believable without being precise. So hopefully that does this, I'll need to sit back and have a look anyway. Thank you for staying with me. Back again for a wee minute. I've sat there and I've watched back my video and uh, I should really be upstairs with my family right now, but uh, there are bits that are bugging me. There are bits that are bugging me, so I'm going to come back and just do a little bit more. So now I see it close up, I'm not so bugged by the bits that were bugging me sitting way over there. 
I'm really short sighted, which does not help for this kind of thing. However, I think I need a little bit up here, a little bit in here. Doesn't have to be huge interventions, I don't think. Um, I don't know. Uh, but I think just a little. up there up here um, yeah not loving this big white line it's too too white but um anyway um and up here it's very blue and I want a bit more yellow back in the only way to do that I think is to use some of the yellow and the toothbrush so I'm gonna have a wee shot of that it may not work in which case I'll be pissed off because I really need this video to kind of work so I can publish it so I'm just gonna try and put some yellow on top of the blue in the hope that that does the job. The problem with that is you do get little blobs coming off and then you have to kind of, you can kind of lift them off. Rub them in a wee bit. line here. Um, yeah, I'm going to go back to darks up here and just, just pull back into this a little bit. Maybe, I don't want to use this big brush at this late stage in the game. Maybe use this brush just to pull some blue into here. Tiny little bit darker back into here. I need to blend that a wee bit. It's going to be a fresh brush. Another one. Oh sugar. That's not what I wanted. There was a big blob of blue in there. blend a little bit. Sorry I'm desperate to get finished here so I'm trying to do it fast because I'm kind of done for the day. Eek. Where's that fresh rag I just had a second ago? This one here. blend a little bit but um, there's just blending beautifully earlier but because there's just white in there it's not quite working uh, and I don't know what to do I don't know what to do this late stage in the day
Okay. Point where you have to finish whether you finish or not. Um, but I don't that's gonna have to be it. A little bit that's really annoying me, just spotted. Uh, you feel the panic. I'm panicking. Well, I can always do another video. But that's me done for tonight anyway.